should lose nothing, but that I should raise it up again at the last day. Jesus informs us that this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and that I will raise him up at the last day. Mm. That helps me to understand that God's will is not that we should perish, but that we enjoy the joy of going home to be with him in the end. Right. Jesus says it's God's will that he not lose any of things. Him, that believe in him and so God's will for man is confound in the fact that God wants me to be with him forever even second Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9 informs us that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us were not willing it's not his will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. That's what God wants. God wants folk to turn away from the world and turn to Him. God's desire is that folk who aren't right will recognize that He can make them right. God's passion for man is that a man realizes that he don't know which way to go and that he will turn to God so that God can help him find the way that's best for him in his life. The will of God is contained in the word of God and when you look at the word of God you understand that I ought to let it be my guide tonight. I ought to let God's word direct me. I ought to let God's word in struck me. Ought to let God's word teach me how that I need to be what I need to be to God. When we talk about a guide tonight we're talking about one that leads or directs another in their way. We're talking about someone that provides a guiding information. We're talking about somebody who directs your conduct or your course of life. We're talking about something that gives you instructions on how to do what's best for yourself and that's what the word of God does when you look at God's word there ain't a situation that you can deal with in this life that God can't help you deal with there ain't a, there ain't a situation that, that you'll have to encounter that God's word can help you overcome it there's nothing that you have to face there's no trial no tribulation there's nothing that you'll have to go through uh, that you can't find the strength in God's word. Uh, it's because God has designed his word uh, to be a road map for man. Uh, it's because God gave us his word uh, so that we could know which way is the right way. Uh, it's because God designed his word uh, to give us comfort during trying times uh, and when you just don't know uh, which way to go or what to do, uh, all you got to do is pick up the word and you'll find you an example. You'll find you something in here that'll help you get over the hurdle that you're trying to get across. When you look at God's word, I just see it for what it is. That's the reason God said, don't you add to it and don't you take away from it. Just follow it as it is. Don't you tamper with it. Don't you deduct nothing from it. And I don't need you multiplying some minutes. Just take it as it is. It's perfect. Just like it is. Because it's God's word. When I look at God's word, I see it being alright. When I look at God's word, I see it being the best book that a man can buy. When I look at God's word, I see something that's Christ-centered. When I look at God's word, I see something that directs me on the path of righteousness. When I look at God's word, I see something that's everlasting. When I look at God's word, I see something that's faithful and true. When I look at God's word, I see something that's God-given. When I look at God's word, I see something that's holy. When I look at God's word, I see something that's inspired. When I look at God's word, I see something that justifies me. When I look at God's word, I see something that keeps me on the path of righteousness. When I look at God's 
food. I see something that leads me beside the still waters. When I look at God's food, I see something that's meaningful. When I look at God's food, I see something that'll never pass away. When I look at God's food, I see something omniscient. When I look at God's food, I see something that's powerful. When I look at God's food, I see something that's quite amazing. When I look at God's word, I see something that's prevalent to the time in which I live. When I look at God's word, I see salvation for the sinner. When I look at God's word, I see truth for the world. When I look at God's word, I see victory over my vices. When I look at God's word, I see something that's wonderful. When I look at God's word, I see Yahweh's message. When I look at God's word, I see something that's got its revision that can see me from the inside out and not from the outside in. When I look at God's word, I see something that will give me the zeal I need to keep on going. That's the reason when I get discouraged or well, that's the reason when I feel like the world is beating down upon me. When it seems like the devil is gaining the mastery. When it seems like he can hit me with more blows than I can take. When it looks like I just can't take another step further. When it looks like I'm not going to make it. When it looks like I'm down and the, and the referee is at count nine. I just pick up God's word. And it tells me that I can do all things through Christ. Who will give me the strength. I just look at God's word. And it tells me greater is he that's in me. And he that's in the world. When I look at God's word. I see weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. When I look at God's word. I see if God be for me. He's more than the world against me. The answer is not in man. The answer is in the word of God. And is the Bible your guide tonight? If the Bible is your guide tonight, you ain't got no reason to fear. When the Bible is your guide, God got you. And if God got me, he's the only one I need. I don't need nobody else when God got me. Oh, when God got me. When God has my back, the world can be against me. Elijah was with his little servant boy, and, and the enemy was coming against him. They had surrounded the camp at night. You know, that's when the enemy does his best work at night parable of the tares and the wheat. The tares were sown and not. Because that's, that's when the enemy is up. Doing what the enemy does best. Plotting and scheming against you. Looking for a way to make your life miserable. While you sleep at night the enemy is up. And so they were in the house. And the enemy had surrounded the camp. Little servant came out and saw them surrounded by the enemy. Went back to Elijah and said, what are we going to do? He, he, he said, the, the Bible said, he said, alas, my master. Uh -huh. In other words, <clears throat> what are we going to do? <laughs> Look at what has happened around here. Elijah looked out and said, they that be with us <laughs> yes, yes, yes. are more than they that are against us. Yes. And Elijah said, Lord, open his eyes yes. so that he can see what he needs to see. When the Lord opened young man's eyes, yes. he saw that God had the enemy surrounded on the mountain yes. with horses chariots of fire. Okay, you follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They that be with us are more than they that are with them. That's, so true. That's the way it is. When God is on your side. When I let the Bible be my guide, the enemy can't do me no harm. Amen. There were so many times they applauded against the Apostle Paul.